They like the balance that they had in race. Casey Kane, we congratulate him. His third career pole. It's all three Hendrick Motorsports in the front. There's a few movers and shakers out there. Carl Edwards free falling for a couple of victory lane is Joey Logano. Get the inside line on who's fast and who's last before setting your NASCAR fantasy race team lineup this weekend. This is the inside line on MRN.com. Presented by Hercules Tires. Now, here are your fantasy experts, Robbie Mays and Tyler Burnett. Two weeks remain in the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series season, which means two races remain where Robbie Mays gets to lose at Fantasy Racing. Welcome back to the Inside Line Fantasy Racing Show, presented by Hercules Tires. This is Robbie Mays. I'm Tyler Burnett. Of course, Rich Colbert is not joining us this week, which is a good thing, right? Even though I just busted you to stop start the show. <laughs> How you doing, everybody? I'm Robbie Mays. <laughs> nice to see you. Thanks for coming along. How, how did you do last week? I had fun. <laughs> well, you're having fun right now because your Gamecocks are winning some games now. Yeah, we're three games in a row. Probably go horribly, horribly wrong tomorrow against Florida, but you know, three in a row right now. So what happened? We got good. It's time to make the Gamecocks great again. The Cubs won the World Series. Donald Trump's now the president. What What's going on with this world? The Gamecocks are <laughs> moving up in the world. I'm excited about that. And Carl Edwards is now in the chase for the NASCAR Sprint Cup, five years removed from his heartbreak at losing against Tony Stewart at Homestead. Remember remember that time a couple of weeks ago we went to Martinsville and Carl Edwards crashed and he was 30-some-odd points out of the chase and everyone's like, Carl Edwards isn't going to make it to Homestead Miami Speedway for a chance at the championship. Guess what? Carl Edwards is going to Miami for a chance at the championship, a legitimate chance at this championship, Tyler. I think he's got a best shot of anybody out there. That team has been running well on the mile-and-a-half racetracks. Obviously, they won at Texas last Sunday night, uh, but uh, I, I think they're going to put up a good, strong challenge in two weeks. Well, if you want to rewind the tape, we can go back to when we picked our chase grid and mm -hmm. our champions, mm -hmm. and I did pick Carl Edwards in the Final Four, and I did pick Carl Edwards as my champion. I just feel like he's always been a championship driver. He's just never had the equipment, and, 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 that, and that's my opinion. I mean, he, he sh probably should have won that championship in 2011, though Tony Stewart was outstanding in the chase. Sure. Um, but I just feel like Carl Edwards is the type of driver, the, you know, he doesn't tear up equipment. He's consistent. He can win you one when he needs to. Carl Edwards, in my opinion, is a championship-type driver, and I think he's got a great shot this weekend. That's why I picked him as my champion earlier on in the year. He's always had bad luck. Um, but for some reason, out of, out of the four Gibbs drivers, I would not have picked Carl Edwards as my championship favorite going of into late. the chase. Of late, I wouldn't. Of late, yeah. yeah but, uh, and, and again, anything can happen. We still got to go to Phoenix this weekend, and uh, anything can happen at Homestead Miami Speedway next week. All right, after the break, we'll talk Phoenix. This is the Inside Line Fantasy Racing Show presented by Hercules Tires. We'll be right back in just a moment to talk more fantasy racing with Tyler and Robbie here on the Inside Line. Ever wish your kid came with an instruction manual? I'm behavioral therapist James Lehman, and I'll show you how to change your child's behavior now with the Total Transformation, the program that helps stop defiance, backtalking, lying, acting out in school, even problems with ADD and ADHD. There's no screaming, no fighting, no frustration. Your child will listen to you again. I guarantee it. Change your child's behavior now with the Total Transformation. Call now. 1-800-406-2945. 1-800-406-2945. You're smart. Got your own trucking business. Making it happen. What if I told you there was a place online where you could connect with other smart owner-operators just like you? It's an online community called Team Run Smart, where people share advice on truck maintenance, fuel savings, healthy habits on the road, and so much more all to make your business more profitable and it's all free visit teamrunsmart.com today to check it out you'll be glad you did teamrunsmart.com brought to you by freightliner trucks Get all the reactions and latest word from the track immediately following each race weekend on MRN's Motorsports Monday with Woody Kane and Joey Meyer. Johnny Sauter drives the number 21 Chevrolet Silverado. You know, I didn't know that uh, necessarily we'd spend the first race of the year. Log on to MRN.com every Monday at noon Eastern or stream the program from the MRN Media Center on demand. It's MRN Motorsports Monday only on the Motor Racing Network. Welcome back to the Inside Line. Here are your hosts, Robbie Mays and Tyler Burnett. 
Phoenix this weekend is sure to be exciting. Hopefully, uh, you're going if you're in the Phoenix area. I mean, I would love to be living in the desert right now. Isn't it cold here in North Carolina? I think it feels great. Well, for us fat boys, it feels pretty good. Slightly less sli- fat. Yeah, slightly less Thank fat. You. But for me, fat. But I grew up in the you Midwest. Get, you need this to get on the Robbie Mays plan. I don't know. Well, I grew up in South Carolina, go Cox, and this is cold. <laughs> go Cox. 30s over the weekend. You know, if they just cut that part that you said, go Cox, you know how weird that would sound? Well. <laughs> Phoenix, the penultimate <laughs> race in the 2016 NASCAR Sprint Cup Series season. And uh, Tyler, I... I'm not sure. I think I learned my lesson in the spring. Kevin Harvick is on my team this weekend, and if he's not on your team this weekend, check your pulse and put him on your team this weekend because he's going to be good. He's won six of the last eight races. He has finished uh, 13th or better in the last nine races, and he's only finished 13th once. He has two second-place finishes over that span. He has six wins and then a 13th-place finish. He is unbelievable. He owns this place, and you talk to anyone else in the garage, go into the garage uh, this weekend if you want to and say who's going to be the winner this weekend, they'll tell you the four. So probably put him on your team, I would say. And he dropped a quarter this week, so drop him and then yeah. pick him back up. That's that's what I did this week. First, second, first, 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 first in the last six races here, and 1,064 laps led in that same time frame. Kevin Harvick, Mr. Phoenix, has to be on your team this week, period. That's that's it. Let's move on. And the thing that helps pick him this weekend is most likely that team has to win. I mean, not he doesn't have to win, but he is close to having, you know, you can you can you can, it's hard to make up 18 points yeah. when you have all eight of the guys most likely running somewhere 10 to 15th, you know, you know in the top 10, top 15. So right now what the chase looks like right now is Kevin Harvick is 7th 18 points behind Kyle Busch. Kurt Busch is 34 points out. In my opinion, Kurt Busch has to win this weekend. Yes. Denny Hamlin is two points out of the cutoff spot, and Matt Kenseth is only one cutoff spot. So you look at Kyle Busch, Matt Kenseth, Denny Hamlin, only three points separate them, and Joey Logano even throw that in the matter, matter or, you know, throw that into the, the pit. Those four right there are separated by four points. This is an unbelievable tight race going in, but Kevin Harvick most likely – his best shot is to win the race this yeah. weekend. He knows he can do it. If, if you look at that cluster of drivers right there, Logano, Kyle Busch, Kenseth, and Denny Hamlin, three points separate the four drivers, they're probably going to be in the top five. If, if not yeah. in the top five, they're going to be in the top ten. You're not going to be, unless something catastrophic happens on Sunday, you're not going to be able to make up 18 points on these guys. Kevin Harvick, we've seen it before. Back up against the wall, he goes and he yep. wins races. That's what makes him a champion. That's how he won the championship in 2014. And if he's going to have another shot next week in Miami, he's got to go win Phoenix this weekend. And he's 100% on um, not you know, not being eliminated right. in this elimination-style format. And we talked about that going into Kansas. And, and, of course, Talladega was the next week. But going into those type of races, he just puts it on his back and he goes. So Kevin Harvick is definitely on my team, definitely should be on your team if you're yep. watching the show right now. Kurt Busch intrigues me because he has not run well. Let's just throw that out there now. He has not been that great. So, therefore, he is pretty cheap on NASCAR.com or most likely any other league that you're you're thinking of here. But he has to win the race, like I said. He has five top tens in the last six races here at Phoenix. I, I'm putting Kurt Busch on my team this week because I think he has to go out there and win the race. No, I don't, he, I don't think he wins the race, but I think he can get you second, third place finish and uh, come out of there with some good points, at least in fantasy. What do you think? Four straight top tens, no laps led in the last four races at Phoenix for Kurt Busch. Started second, uh, finished seventh in this race last year. Of course, that race was rain-shortened. Kurt Busch, to me, Tyler, it it seems like they're there, but there's something missing about that bunch right now. I don't know what it is. Uh, Martinsville, I went up there thinking they were going to be a threat to, to possibly get a top five, maybe win the race. And they, they were out to lunch. Uh, Texas last week is the same. It's kind of why they're in this hole right now, 34 points um, out of the chase. I don't have uh, uh, Kurt Busch on my team this week. It's not a bad pick, but I'm just not going down that road. I do have Jimmy Johnson. And if they're, you know, if Kevin Harvick is the new Mr. Phoenix, Jimmy Johnson previously held that title. Uh, four wins, 15 top fives, 977 laps led in his career average finish here. 
is a 7.8. Has the highest driver rating right now at a 112.0. Uh, his 10 race average is a little bit low, though. Since they did the reconfiguration between the races in 2011, he struggled a little bit at Phoenix. But I still think Jimmy Johnson is a good option. Four wins, nothing to lose this weekend, kind of like Texas last week, although I'll admit that was disappointing, his, his run at Texas last Sunday. Uh, but I still think Jimmy Johnson would be a good choice at Phoenix. I think I'm stepping away from Johnson this week just because he hasn't been all that great recently at Phoenix. I mean, he finished 11th the last time we were there, which was uh, in the spring. He finished 11th in this race last year. Or, excuse me, he finished 5th in this race last year, but 11th um, the time before that. 39th. There's a 32nd place finish in there. I mean, he has a top five in the last four races, but other than that, he hasn't been outstanding at Phoenix. So... Like you said, the past may be the past for Jimmy Johnson. Right now, this team knows they don't have to win. And and I think I saw that a little bit at Texas last week. They did a pit stop right before they knew it was going to rain. So are they? do they not care about winning right now just because they're trying things? I mean, this track right is not similar at all to Homestead, so they don't need to try anything specific. They, they pretty much just have to go out there and win or just want to. But it just doesn't seem like they have the will The will right now. They're saving it all for Homestead. I still think Jimmy Johnson, Chack, and Alice, they should be playing prevent defense. I really do. I think if they go win on Sunday. What do they need to play pre prevent defense To for? keep guys like Kevin Harvick or Joey Logano yeah. or Kyle Busch away from them in Miami in two weeks. Kevin Harvick is a threat to win at Miami to win the championship. He won there two years yeah. ago. Joey Logano is a perpetual top five car at, at Homestead Miami Speedway. If Jimmy Johnson goes out and wins this weekend, he could keep Kevin Harvick away from him in Miami in two weeks to try to get a seventh championship. So pre prevent defense for Jimmy Johnson this week. All right, so I have Kurt Busch, Kevin Harvick. You're, uh, you have Jimmy Johnson, Kevin Harvick. Who's your third? Yeah, I'm sticking Chevrolet. I'm going Chase Elliott this week. Uh, finished eighth here in the spring, kind of where he started his little run of top tens back in, in the beginning part of the year. Uh, so I like Chase Elliott this week. Uh, starting to pick things up a little bit. Finished fourth at Texas last Sunday. All right, I have Denny Hamlin going to the Toyota camp here. 10.4 um, average finish over the last 10 races. He's actually really good on flat tracks, you know, sh flat short tracks. Third the last time we were there, eighth the time before that. He has a fifth. He, f he won this race, what was it, eight races ago now, so which would have been four years ago. 2012. So Denny Hamlin is on my team this week. I just, I I'm going out of the box this week with Kurt Busch, Denny Hamlin. I obviously, I can't go out of the box with Kevin Harvick. But I like Kurt Busch, Denny Hamlin to be potential spoilers this weekend. Sure. Uh, you know, Hamlin, we talk about the similarities between Phoenix and Martinsville. Uh, Hamlin, a five-time winner at Martinsville Speedway. He's got two wins here at Phoenix. Uh, it's It's been a while since his last one, though, so he, he needs to pick that up. And, again, looking at the chase grid, uh, Hamlin is out right now, but he could easily make up two points uh, at, at any point during the course of the night or, or afternoon on Sunday. Alex Bowman returns to my team this week, gotten a lot better driving the 88 car the last few weeks, 13th at Texas. Uh, 36th at Talladega. Uh, it's Talladega, though. 7th at Kansas. Was running in the top 10 at Charlotte before a crash. Uh, so I like Alex Bowman, and David Reagan will also complete my team. I have A.J. Allmendinger. I think that team has run very, very well to end the year. I think he is good you know, on short, flat tracks. So I am putting A.J. Allmendinger on my team with a 16.9 average finish, which is probably above average for that team uh, over you know the last 10 races here at Phoenix. I then have Michael Annette to round my team. So I have Kevin Harvick, Denny Hamlin, Kurt Busch, A.J. Allmendinger, and Michael Annette to round my team. I'm going off the cuff a little bit this week, but I kind of want to make up points. I'm 1,000 points behind Rich. I don't think I'm going to make that up. But no, you're I can not. maybe crack the top 50 in the league, which would be yeah. respectable compared yeah. to where you are. Let's go to break. <laughs> Alex Hayden is joining us today on the inside line. He's after the break. This is the inside line fantasy racing show presented by Hercules Tires. The Inside Line will return in just a moment. Live sports are the one true reality entertainment where a single dramatic moment can become timeless. In NASCAR, Motor Racing Network's live broadcasts elevate your senses to the sights, sounds, and struggles taking place on the racetrack. Keselowski to the bottom of the racetrack. He tries to slide up. Newman is there. Sideways is Keselowski. The power of radio to the imagination of the listener. Tune in to the Motor Racing Network. Visit MRN.com for an affiliate list in your local area. 
Looking to find the best place for all the latest NASCAR, Sprint Cup, Xfinity, Camping World Truck, KN and Modified Series News? MRN.com is the place to go. Your online home for NASCAR news, opinion, podcasts, videos, race schedules, results, and statistics. Award-winning motorsports writers keep you informed and up-to-date on all the latest breaking NASCAR news and in-depth stories and opinion. MRN.com, your online home for all the NASCAR information you're looking for. It's all over at Martinsville, Virginia. Richard Petty has pulled it off. Throwback Thursday. Classic MRN race broadcast on MRN.com. Waltrip will win the track race to turn three. Earnhardt gets him. Hard into the wall goes Waltrip. Hard goes Earnhardt. Everybody else spins either way. Out of the number four corner, down to the line. Neil Bonnet is going to win. The Northwestern Bank 400. He'll beat Waltrip a two-car length. What a finish here at North Wilkesboro. Throwback Thursday. Thursdays at 1 Eastern on MRN.com. Let's talk more fantasy racing on The Inside Line. Here's Robbie and Tyler. Today's Sprint Cup Series practice at 1.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Sprint Cup Series qualifying at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time. The NASCAR Camping World Truck Series Lucas Oil 150 at 9.30 p.m. Eastern Time. That's all coming up today on MRN.com and your local MRN affiliate. You can hear this man who's going to be on probably most of those broadcasts, Alex Hayden. He's joining us now. Alex, how are you? doing well and yes i am i'll be on just about every broadcast this weekend and look forward to it too yeah it's gonna be fun uh let's talk some fantasy racing um we're heading to a track that's kind of tough to call though there's one man who's unbelievable at this racetrack i assume you're starting kevin harvick let's just throw that out now no i'm not believe it or not i am not i am not on the kevin harvick bandwagon for phoenix and here's why there's there's multiple reasons but Mostly it's because I, I'm a numbers guy. I just believe in numbers. And as dominant as he's been, it just can't continue uh, every single time we come to this racetrack out in the desert. So uh, that's that's part of it. It's just I'm just I'm just not buying in because of the the numbers. No one can dominate that much, in my opinion. Then I add in the fact that for the second year, basically Harvick, he's he's in a must-win situation. He he, he had, can lightning strike twice in the bottle. I mean. I don't necessarily believe that. It comes down to numbers there and statistics. Probability. I don't I don't expect it. Then then you throw in the fact that I think the biggest key in this entire race is not going to be actually on the racetrack. It's going to be on pit road. And I think the pit crews are the ones who have as much, if not more, pressure on them. Because one slight mistake on Phoenix pit road that gets you behind so much in track position that it's very difficult to make that back up. It's one of the shortest races we have all season long. It's a 500, but that's a 500K. It's only 312 laps, 312 miles. So one slight mistake on pit road puts you behind, and we know how both Kevin Harvick and Denny Hamlin have had pit road problems throughout the the majority of the year. So uh, I wouldn't start either one of those guys. Right. I, that's a good point. I mean, if it's a green flag pit stop and you have to come down pit road for a penalty, that's a lap easily, almost yeah. two laps. It because it's it's still a long pit road at Phoenix. You got to go all the way from turn four all the way to the exit of turn two before you get back on the racetrack. That's a good point, Alex. I, I didn't think about that. Earlier we talked about Jimmy Johnson. Uh, I, I said playing prevent defense to try to prevent guys from getting into the championship four next week at Miami. Jimmy Johnson a good option this weekend at Phoenix, even though he hasn't yeah. run well there recently? Before you finish your, your, your question, yes. Uh, I, I think both Jimmy Johnson and Carl Edwards uh, should be started this weekend. And, and my reasoning behind that is both of them are very good, especially Carl. He's very good at Phoenix. And with Kevin Harvick's dominance there, people just tend to forget about who else runs really well at Phoenix International Raceway. And the, the big factor with both Jimmy Johnson and Carl Edwards this weekend, in my opinion, is this track being so unique. It's a one-mile track, completely different configuration than anything we race on all season long. Therefore, these two teams, the Johnson 48 car, the Edwards 19 car, they don't have anything to learn to get ready for next week's championship race down in Miami. They have one goal, and that's to go win the race and prevent everybody else from, from getting that automatic buy and, and taking a deep breath. So I really like, especially Carl Edwards this weekend, I love Johnson and Edwards to start on fantasy racing this weekend. Carl Edwards involved in one of the closest finishes ever in Phoenix history. 
the last time we went there when Kevin Harvick eked him out at the at the line. Uh, but Carl Edwards finished second. All right, now that you've thrown my team under the bus uh, with <laughs> <laughs> with Kevin Harvick and Denny Hamlin on my team, how about Kurt Busch? He has he he's a guy that has what five you know five uh, top tens in the last six races here. He needs to win. He's 34 points out of the cutoff. Do you look at Kurt Busch this weekend and Tony Gibson? He would be a viable starter. I, I don't necessarily think I would put him on my team uh, right off the bat, but I think he's a viable starter because of his must-win situation, which means they got nothing to lose. The pressure is off. Kind of like what I was talking about with the pressure of the pit crews for Kevin Harvick, Denny Hamlin, some of these other teams. The pressure's off. They can just go race and do what they do because the only thing that's going to advance them essentially is a win, barring any kind of major catastrophe from all the competitors in front of them. But but I, I think it's a legitimate, but realistically, and Kurt Busch runs Phoenix well. There's no question about that. Um, is he great at Phoenix? Nah, not not as of late. So I, I would consider Kurt Busch uh, uh, maybe an eighth, ninth place car. For Kurt Busch fans, for Tony Gibson fans, I, I love both of those guys. I love that whole race team. Uh, I hope they do well. I really do. But realistically, when I'm trying to put together my fantasy racing team, let's face it, it's all about us individually when it comes to our team. Mm-hmm. Uh, Kurt Busch is not a starter for me this weekend. Well, then let's break this down. You have the 19, the 48. Who do, who's the rest of the guys you look out on your team this week? I, I love Kyle Larson at Phoenix. I love him. Okay. And I like Kyle Larson at Phoenix because of the uniqueness of the racetrack. And now that he's been around the block or two, if you will, in the Sprint Cup Series, has a great understanding of these cars, has a good race team, no question about that. This unique track is to me, suits guys who can adapt. And Kyle Larson's one of those guys who can adapt to just about any type of racetrack or, or, or bad handling race car or good handling race car. I think Kyle Larson, uh, in my book, is, is a guy I would definitely want on my race team as, as a third guy. If it's a four-man team, it's a five-man team, depending on whatever league people play in. you, you got to look at some other folks that, depending on, on the type of league you have, whether it costs money to put people in or just simple how many picks you have left, there are other drivers that, uh, that I think are worth looking at. I think Matt DiBenedetto is a guy worth looking at. He's been cleared to race. He's hungry to get back behind the wheel of the race car. Are they going to go out and win the race? No. Are they going to go out and finish top ten? Maybe not. Chances are they're not. But I think he can finish 15th. I think he can finish 16th. And that's a solid day for somebody uh, at that level of people's fantasy racing teams. So I like Matt DiBenedetto as a fourth guy. If I had to put a fifth one in there, give me Casey Mears. I I like Casey Mears there, too. He's just a veteran. And Casey Mears has a lot going on behind the scenes because his name's come up in the rumor mill an awful lot. Uh, And whether these rumors become true or not, who knows? We'll wait and see on that. But when somebody feels like, they're in the spotlight of having their job taken away from them. Potentially, they tend to do better. So I, I like Casey Mears as another potential starter for a team. Alex, who wins the penultimate race of the 2016 Sprint Cup Series season? Okay, that's one. The week is just starting, and that's the first <laughs> that That's That's uh, actually two today. So <laughs> that, that's, that's the word of the weekend. No yeah, question oh my about goodness. it. Um, honestly, who wins? Carl Edwards wins. I, I really believe Carl Edwards is a guy that's going to take it to victory lane because they've been so overlooked, not just here in the chase, but also the entire regular season. Even though he's in Joe Gibbs racing equipment, those Camrys are fast. We know that. That's, that's no secret. And, and, and furniture row racing, with that alliance technically with Joe Gibbs racing, Martin Trex Jr. has had huge success this year. Carl Edwards has been the guy that everybody's just kind of overlooked. And, and after the win last week, he had a good race car. He deserved to win Texas. Doesn't matter what you think he did. Well, we're at Phoenix. Nothing to lose. Carl Edwards is good here. Uh, and same type of reasons I explained about Kyle Larson. Edwards can drive a loose race car. He can drive on unique styles of track. And I think this fits his style. I like Carl Edwards to win this race. All right. Carl Edwards goes to victory lane and says, Alex Hayden. Alex, thanks so much. Uh, good luck with not starting Kevin Harvick this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> well, I appreciate that. And, again, nothing against Kevin or, or Rodney Childress, the crew chief, Cheddar Smith, the car chief. Those are fantastic, wonderful racers, uh, no question about it. And they have a wonderful record at Phoenix. Would it surprise me if Kevin won? No, mm. no, it wouldn't surprise me at all. I just 
don't buy into it for this weekend. All right. Alex, thanks so much. We'll see you in a little bit. All right, guys. Take care. Alex Hayden, everyone, joining us. Uh, let's just say this now. His opinions are his own <laughs> because – I think you have to have Kevin Harvick. I think you do, too. <laughs> I, I really do. So, All right, we'll see. If he goes out there and leads, what, 300 of the laps and loses to Carl Edwards, then I guess Alex is still right. But Still get 150 bonus points for yeah, laps less. That's so. right. We'll take a final break. We'll come back. We'll uh, talk more here. We'll have our winners here on the Inside Line Fantasy Racing Show. Got a question or opinion about your fantasy lineup? Give us a call at 8444-ASK-MRN. And it may get used on next week's show. The Inside Line will return in a moment. Whatever you drive, wherever you go, Hercules Tires will get you there. Whether you're running on dirt or running a job. Our dependable, high-quality tires are the perfect fit for your needs. For unmatched value, selection, and warranty with industry-leading road hazard protection, there's only one choice. Hercules Tires. To learn more, visit HerculesTire.com or call 800-677-9535. Hercules Tires, right on our strength. On November 13th, the NASCAR semifinal comes to Phoenix. Just about everybody here is holding their breath. Harvick, Bush, Johnson. Man, they almost wrecked right there. Edwards, Hamlin, Stewart. It feels like you're on pins and needles. When a Sprint Cup championship is on the line. Wow, look at him slam. Every moment counts. The Can-Am 500 on November 13th. Secure the best remaining seats now at phoenixraceway.com. Motor Racing Network has a way for you to reach out and express your thoughts and opinions on NASCAR. It's the MRN Fan Forum Hotline. Just wondering what's the first thing you can do. I was curious about those new rules from what I heard. Call in 844-4-ASK-MRN. Got a question or comment for a driver or MRN personality? 844-4-ASK-MRN. You guys keep it on. Let's see you guys next It's weekend. the Fan Forum Hotline, your connection to the sport of NASCAR. We now return to the Inside Line with Robbie Mays and Tyler Burnett. Welcome back to the Inside Line Fantasy Racing Show presented by Hercules Tires, the penultimate show for 2016. Oh I'm Robbie Mays. He's ti- Get used to that word this weekend. I'm tired of it already. Well, something else you're tired of. Under a rock or Tyler? Do you live your life up under a rock or are you Tyler Burnett? What am I, like 8 and 11? You're 8 and 11. I went back hey, yesterday. Hey, you got 8? That's, that's pretty impressive. This is a photograph. Collectively, what is it? And then name the people that are in the photograph. I have photograph. to name the people? That's, All four. I'm not going to get this. <laughs> Do you know what this is? I know it's Mount Rushmore. Okay. I know that's George Washington. Yeah. I know it's Abraham Lincoln. Okay. Who are the two in the middle? Um... One's Roosevelt. One is Roosevelt. Which Roosevelt? Um, Teddy. Okay. 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 You got three. Now who's the fourth? Adams. No. Who? Who is it? Thomas Jefferson. Uh, so I, that's the, the sec, That was going to be my second guess. I'm actually pretty proud. I almost knew that. And the Rock just missed me. The Rock missed you. We literally put you under a rock this week. <laughs> Eight and twelve. Ringo. I was going to say Thomas Jefferson. That that was going to be. My second guess. Dang yeah. it. So you were going to say it, but you didn't say it. It's pretty bad. Yeah. Rango don't, at Phoenix. Don't show this video to my wife. She's a social studies teacher. I know. <laughs> Rango at Phoenix. He selects Ryan Blaney. He's got Kevin Harvick. He's got Chase Elliott, Jimmy Johnson, Chris Buescher. His winner is Kevin Harvick, and his manufacturer bonus is Chevrolet. All right, who's your winner? Harvick. How come you're just taking the easy way out? It didn't work for you last week. You picked Jimmy Johnson, and that didn't help you. Oh, who's your winner, big boy? Well, I I don't want to pick Kevin Harvick, but I might have to just so I can catch Rich. No, I'm just kidding. I think I'm going to take Joey Logano to win this weekend. Okay. He's been good. We have we really haven't talked about him much, but I like Logano. Okay. I mean, look at he has uh let's see, six top tens in the last seven races. Yeah. So Logano is my pick to win this weekend. Okay. All right. Coming All right. up, uh Sprint Cup Series practice here on the MRN.com at one thirty PM 
Eastern time. Sprint Cup Series qualifying at 6.30 p.m. Eastern tonight. Tomorrow, more practice. The Ticket Galaxy 200. That's the Xfinity Series. And then, of course, the Sprint Cup Series K&M 500 at 1.30 p.m. Eastern time. Your final thoughts before we uh, take this thing away? I'm so excited for the penultimate race of the oh, season. Goodness. That's four. Four, everyone. Thanks, Alex Hayden. Thanks, Daryl Smith, our producer. This is the Inside Line. We'll talk to you next week as we go championship racing at Homestead Miami Speedway. So long, everybody. You've been listening to the Inside Line, presented by Hercules Tires. Stream us every Friday on MotorRacingNetwork.com or on the MRN app. The Inside Line is also available on demand at the MRN.com Media Center or download it through iTunes or Stitcher. The Inside Line is a production of the Motor Racing Network.